So you do two steps in a if you're trying to figure out like is there some sanctionable copying here, right? Mm-hmm. And so first is was there copying at all, right? And that kind of thing doesn't come up. You don't see that come into court very often or at least not in particularly dramatic high profile ways cuz usually it's pretty easy to just compare this, compare that like pretty much the same, right? That's sort of step one of your analysis. And here, it's important to distinguish that there's two possible stages at which copyright infringement could have occurred, right? There's, did GitHub infringe people's copyright? And Mm -hmm. are people who are using Copilot infringing the copyright, right? Mm -hmm. And the answers to those may be different. Like, I tend to think that the answer is in both cases, there's no infringement. Right. Like that's sort of my bottom line, but it's important to like distinguish between those two because you can see a world, right? Like there's definitely arguments to be made that GitHub is infringing, but the user of Copilot is not. Right. And so let me get into a little bit why that is. Right. So when you're looking at fair use, I mentioned the sort of transformative concept, but before we get to that, there's these four rules and I can't believe Maybe I've had a longer morning than I thought. I I should normally be able to (laughs) rattle them off, but we'll go through them one by one and I will really try to remember the fourth one by the time I get to it. So one is like the nature of the taking, right? So like, are you doing this for like some kind of societally advancing purpose or not, right? And this is where things like teachers get much more of a flexibility than like a rival book publisher, Right. Another is the how much did you copy? And so like it is one thing. So this is one of the key ways in which how GitHub is copied and how a copilot user might copy is very different because copilot undoubtedly at some point in the process copied the whole thing. Right. And so a court looks differently at did you copy the whole thing versus did you copy, you know, one function fragment out of a giant you know, this came up in the Oracle Google trial because Google, well, really Apache, but we'll, we'll say Google for simplicity, really only copied like one type of thing, right? Like they copied, I used to have these numbers right on top of my brain. It's a really good sign that I don't remember them exactly anymore. But like, <laughs> it's basically like 10,000 lines of API names and, you know, function names, but they didn't copy the other several million lines of the implementation. Right. Like that was just re-implemented them. Right. They they carefully re-implemented them. Right. And so a court will look at that and say, oh, it looks like actually not much of this was copied. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is where it gets a little complicated. Right. And again, why does this go to courts to decide these things is there's a famous case about the biography of Gerald Ford, who's like our nation's most boring president essentially, right? Except that he like pardoned Richard Nixon, right? So he wrote a biography and a magazine got their hands on like an advanced copy of the biography. And they basically reprinted the part about him pardoning Nixon. And the court was like, let's be honest here. Nobody is buying that book for any reason other than to read the part about pardoning Nixon, because otherwise who cares? It's Gerald Ford, right? So the court said, well, like, even though only a very small part was taken, like as a percentage of the book, it's still not a fair use because that was really the core of the value of the book. Right. And Oracle tried to make a similar argument, which was, okay, well, yeah, you know, you didn't copy 95 percent of Java, but you did copy the most valuable part, which is the API. And so this is where, you know, a copilot user is going to get. I mean, I think they said in in their white paper, which I recommend everybody read, and I'll again, I'll send you guys a link because it's pretty short and pretty interesting. They say something like in their internal testing, something like 0.1% of suggestions actually matched back to, like when when they did a sampled thing, only like 0.1% of suggestions looked like they were copied from another source, right? The other 99.9% were original, Mm -hmm. original in the sense of like being created. By the by the AI, yeah, by the AI. It's still sort of weird to talk about things being created by an AI, right? (laughs) So, if you're trying to re-implement some competitor's API, I probably wouldn't use Copilot, right? Because then it's gonna (laughs) the output is gonna look like 
you took the heart of this other person's thing, right? It's it's probably going to start auto-suggesting code that looks a lot like their implementation if it's an open source implementation, right? So like if you're, if there's like a GPL implementation of something and you want to write an MIT implementation of it, like I suspect Copilot, I haven't seen anybody try this yet, right? But I suspect Copilot is going to start doing things that look a lot like the original implementation. And then you're going to have a problem. But because one of the tests for fair use is how much of it did you take? If like you end up with like a five line fragment out of somebody's GPL code, that's like a hundred thousand lines of, you know, or like, I mean, what's the Linux kernel these days? Like six, seven million lines of code, right? Like if you end up five, like a court's just going to laugh that out of court. (laughs) 